DFM, DFM rocks. Bulaminaka, I'm Linda Form, I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm a character from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love the Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. And the news tonight, bus driver involved in Lakena fatal accident remanded. Fijians can travel with more kava to Australia. And Yellow Ribbon Walk a success. From the studios of FBC Suva, Amrita Saga. A 46-year-old bus driver who was involved in an accident that claimed the lives of two children in Lakena No. 2 Hill, Nosori, has been remanded in custody by the Nosori Magistrates Court. Shalene Jatan, charged with two counts of dangerous driving, occasioning death, two counts of dangerous driving causing grievous bodily harm and one count of dangerous driving appeared in a special court sitting this morning. Pranita Prakash was in court and filed this report. It is alleged that the bus driven by Shalene Jatan tumbled down the hill in Lakena Nosori and flipped over on Wednesday afternoon. The prosecution today objected to bail saying that the case is of national interest and the charge against Jatan is serious. The prosecution also said that it would be in the interest of the accused to be kept in the remand center as the incident eventuated a few days ago. He further stated the possibility of tension among the community. However, the defense stated the residents of the area saw the accident and have said that the accident was not the driver's fault. The defense added that the surrounding circumstances led to the accident. She added that Jatan needs medical attention as there were visible injuries on his body. While responding on the bail objection, she also made serious allegations against the bus company's owner. She alleged that the bus company's owner met Jatan while he was in police custody to say that there was no mechanical fault in the bus. The defense stated that police should be in control of who meets him while in custody. The matter has been adjourned to Monday for bail hearing. Meanwhile, police have confirmed that a separate investigation is ongoing regarding the actions of the driver of a private car who allegedly refused to give way to the bus before the tragic accident occurred. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Good news for Fijians travelling to Australia as they will now have double the personal allowance of kava when travelling to Australia. This was one of the topics discussed between Prime Minister Voreng and Baini Marama and his Australian counterpart Scott Morrison during a bilateral meeting in Suva yesterday. Lena Rees reports. While on a two-day visit to watch the Prime Minister's 13 yesterday, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison announced that Fijians can now take twice the amount of cover while travelling to Australia from 2 kilograms to 4 kilograms. One of the things that we've talked about before, which started when I first went to Vanuatu, and then we pursued together um, uh, the changes we're making uh, to, uh, on cover uh, to enable a, a greater personal um, uh, allowance to be able to bring in. We're doubling that. Sharing a light moment with his counterpart, Prime Minister Varenge Mbani Marama says this announcement will be welcomed by all Fijians. And thank you for this announcement. Come on, the whole of Fiji is waiting for it. <laughs> Kava vendors at the Suva market says this will boost their businesses and Fiji's kava industry. So here is a good for us for selling the grog in Fiji. They take a lot of uh, into Australia. They, they improve our um, business in Fiji. Uh, like myself, I've got plenty of families there, like my uncles and aunties and fools. And also they stay there. Sometimes they want to take more grogs, but they can't take it now. It's a good news for me. Now that they have opened it up to 4 kg of cover, this is very good news, especially for us cover market vendors. The two leaders discussed a range of issues such as the sustainability of fish stock throughout the Pacific and other multilateral agreements that will be deliberated on further. Lena Rees, FBC News. Meanwhile, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison toured the Fiji military forces Black Rock camp in Nandi today. Morrison is pleased with its upcoming peacekeeping and humanitarian assistance and disaster relief camp. 
The PM says it's great to see the progress made at BlackRock. It builds on the bilateral meeting he had with Prime Minister Vrengambani Marama yesterday, where they went through follow-up actions on the items discussed in Canberra. Prime Minister Morrison was received by Minister for Foreign Affairs, Inia Serui Ratu, and also visited the 183 RFMF officers who were on a six-week pre-deployment training for Iraq. The Australian government's assistance towards the HADR camp is part of its Pacific Step Up initiative. I mean, it's been 40 years now and more where Fiji has served, and we have a particular veteran down here, as you say, was on your 11th, I think, um, deployment now, and uh, over 12 years. And that is a, a, a tremendous sacrifice and commitment. And we know that there's been some 52 Fijians um, who have made the ultimate sacrifice for the incredible work that you do in peacekeeping missions around the world. We are in Australia very, very proud to s serve beside and, and with uh, the Fijian Defence Forces. Fijians have been reminded to not treat ex-offenders as second-class citizens, as this will create what is known as the second prison. Speaking during the first ever Yellow Ribbon Walk in Lotoka this morning, the Minister for Employment, Productivity and Industrial Relations and Youth and Sports stressed the importance of creating an environment of acceptance for ex-offenders. Felipe Naikaso has more. More than a thousand people joined the 2019 Yellow Ribbon Walk in Lotoka this morning to show their support towards giving a second chance to ex-offenders. When we as community treat ex-offenders as second-class citizens and do not give them the opportunity to reform in order to redeem themselves, we create what is known as a second prison. Ladies and gentlemen, to be accepted and loved is a natural human need. People will go and look for it in the wrong places if they are not accepted and supported by the community. The four kilometers walk started from Narara Parade through to Tavewa Avenue, Verona Street and back to Narara Parade saw people from all walks of life joining the early morning event. It is important that the, uh, the general uh, community, the members of the public uh, work with us. Eh? Uh, Fiji Corrections uh, cannot do this work alone to change a uh, person. Eh? Uh, we really need the support of the community. Uh, because at the end of the day, after we uh, provide all the programs that we have, they will uh, one day return to their community, eh, where they come from. Some ex-offenders were also present during the event and shared the journey and importance of the Yellow Ribbon program. After serving my time, I saw that there were many of my friends who kept going in and out of prison. So I decided to start a group called Pygmies, which is aimed at creating awareness for youth so that they don't end up in prison. The program is expected to be held in Lotoka again next year. Philip and I, Caso, FBC News. A seven-year-old boy is the country's latest drowning victim. He drowned in Nasese Suva yesterday afternoon while swimming with some of his friends. Police spokesperson Anna Naisora says they tried to resuscitate the child and later took him to the CWM hospital. He was confirmed dead minutes after arriving at the hospital. Meanwhile, the search for the children who were reported to have been swimming with the seven-year-old victim was called off as they were all accounted for. Police say three of the children were found safe at their homes, while one was found in a state of shock and walking towards Suva Grammar School last night by a police officer. Police are pleading with parents and guardians to carefully monitor the whereabouts of their children. Up ahead in FPC News, Consumer Council widens its investigations. And Miss Fiji Pageant 2019 launched. Hola, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Raki Raki. I love Gold FM, only the classic. Fiji Revenue and Customs Service presented a submission to the Public Accounts Committee clarifying their 2016 audited reports. FRCS CEO Vishwana Das says the institution has gone through a change in mindset to ensure they're taking care of taxpayers in order to effectively collect the appropriate taxes, in addition to support, supporting the continued growth of the economy. Maggie Boyle reports. 
That's 85 years to get to the first billion dollar revenue mark. Earmarked to reach $3 billion by the end of this financial year, the FRCS is emphasizing how. Provide, facilitate and, and, and assist taxpayers because, you know, they take the risk, they grow the business, they grow the economy. And with the legislative authority that uh, the tax administration has, we then collect taxes. Ensuring they are hitting international benchmarks, Das notes how much of the economy is taxed. In this case, you know, we can see our average uh, at 23.3%. At so that is a good indication that you know we are in the right space and right balance of economic growth and, and uh, tax revenues uh, for the state. The PAC members, though, had several questions. There is a decline, though it is not much, in your 2018 and 2019. That currently, you know, the global economic slowdown, you know, has some impact on the Fijian economy as well. Reduce the economy in terms of uh, indirect, uh, direct taxes compared to indirect taxes. Taxation is a uh, uh, shift away from income taxes into consumption taxes because consumption taxes are more proportionate. Uh, it's more like user pay. In the 2016-2017 financial year, the FRCS collected $2.5 billion in revenue, which consisted of income tax, VAT, trade taxes and others. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Following the discovery of poor quality meat sold in certain supermarkets, the Consumer Council is widening its investigations. It is now questioning businesses on the pricing of imported fruit and vegetables. Kuroi Tandalala reports. The Consumer Council today clarified that there is no duty on imported food and vegetables and is questioning the pricing and quality of these items in some supermarkets. There is no duty in uh, imported foods and vegetables, but what we have noticed is that you know the quality of food is getting worse and there is not much change in the prices. So that's what our concerns are. If people are paying so much you know, and high prices for fruits and vegetables, they should be provided with the quality that they can consume. Council Chief Executive Sima Shandil says some supermarkets are resorting to unethical practices to sell off certain products unfit for consumption. What the supermarkets do is they slice off the rotting part and they will prepack it and then put it at a lower price for sale for consumers. Meanwhile, Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission Chief Executive says they're working closely with relevant bodies to ensure consumer safety. Now, consumers ought to go and say this is not on. We do not accept it. Of course, FCCC, when we find such matters, we'll send people down, we'll make sure we uh, take this, uh, whichever trader is there, we take them to task. We're all about making sure that consumers are not unfairly treated, that fairness exists, that businesses uh, operate in a transparent manner. But time and time again, you'll find that such issues do come up. The Consumer Council and FCCC are conducting surprise checks and monitoring all over the the country to ensure fair trading and that consumers get value for their money. Kore Tandulala, FBC News. More than 50 visually impaired Fijians attended the launch of the week-long White Cane event today at the Fiji Museum in Suva. United Blind Person of Fiji Events Chair Reginald Rad says this is an opportune time for these Fijians to create awareness and express their concerns to various service providers in Fiji. Josea Nanunga reports. The poor response of various service providers towards the disadvantaged group in Fiji continues to worry the UBPF. We'll be talking about the challenges that they face and how that could be improved. Uh, commercially, it could be uh, uh, more better for uh, the organizations uh, to be disabled friendly. So it's basically uh, the members will be um, uh, talking about uh, how the service could be improved and how uh, it could be an easy access for persons living with disability. Rod says few registered members of the UBPF have turned down their international travel appointments due to their disability and that is something the organization will address. In terms of uh, accessibility for people living with disability at the airport when they're departing uh, internationally. Project officer Anasaini Vakaindia says White Cane play an important role in the lives of his fellow Fijians. The reason why we do it every October because on the 15th of October is the International White King Day. So that's where our members, um, our members remember the importance of a white king to a person who is totally blind or vision impairment. The week-long program will see registered members of UBPF visiting various organizations, business houses and media organizations to tell their stories. The event will end next week Saturday at the New Zealand High Commissioner's residence with the launching of the 2020 National Disabled Awards Night. Chose Nanunga, FBC News. The Miss Fiji pageant was launched at the Civic Center in Suva last night. 
17 contestants will be vying for the 2019 Miss Fiji crown and they are the winners of the township and city festivals held in 2018 and early this year. This year's Miss Fiji pageant will be held on the 11th of November. The winner of the Miss Fiji pageant will go on to represent the country at this year's Miss Pacific Islands pageant that will be held on the 25th of November in Papua New Guinea. Fiji has won the Miss Pacific Islands title three times. Speaking at the launch, Miss Fiji pageant committee chair Div Damodar says the launch marks the commencement of Fiji's national annual pageant with the focus on empowering women. We kept our judging criteria very independent. We took time, it took us about good two months to find these judges and we went through, we understood them, where they were coming from, what were the experience over the years and we, we took, we took con professional consultants on board to understand, to, to do the judging criteria. Ahead in sports, Fiji Mbati coach proud of Prime Minister's 13 team. And Lambasa through to IDC final, details after the break. Fiji Prime Minister's 13 team last night suffered a thrashing from the Australian Prime Minister's 13 side, 52 points to 10. Well, despite the loss, Fiji Mbati coach Brendan Costin still praised the local boys for an amazing effort. Faria Begum with the story. Fiji were only able to score two tries as they were outclassed by the Australian Prime Minister's 13 at the ANZ Stadium in Suva last night. Fiji should be so proud of those boys. They're local boys that play for local clubs in Fiji. Like the score is irrelevant. It was about, it was about the local player being able to compete with the very best players in the world. Coach Costin says there were patches in the game where Fiji held it together really well. That they were a far superior side than us. They're, they're faster. They're stronger. They're bigger. And we held our own. Like, I, I couldn't be more proud of my players. Australian coach Mel Meninga says these sorts of matches are important as it helps the team gauge what their status is in terms of development. We've got some really fantastic Fijian players playing in the NRL. Unfortunately, they didn't play tonight, but um, it gives other you know, locals um, who you know, it's, you know, have got um, obviously dreams of playing in the NRL an opportunity to play against the very best players. So. The Australian team will now take part in the World Nines next week in Sydney, Australia. Faria Begum, FBC Sports. Sandbags are being filled and some public transports cancelled as people in Japan prepare for Super Typhoon Hagbis. Millions of people have been warned to brace up. Australia has become the second team from Pool D to qualify for the 2019 Rugby World Cup quarterfinals after they defeated Georgia 27-8 to in their final pool match last night. Wallabies coach Michael Chaker says they handled the game well. Ireland scrum coach Greg Feek says the physicality of the Samoans is an underlining part of their rugby. Feek says that's what they bring to the table. Well, defending champions, the Fiji Airways, Fiji Ndrua have made it to the next round of the 2019 National Rugby Championship. Well, Lombasa are through to the final of the 2019 Courts Inter-District Tournament after they thrashed Nandi five goals to nil in their semi-final match today. Lombasa's goals were scored by Ilisoni Longaivo, Ashnil Raju, Antonio Tuivuna and goalkeeper Aquila Mataisuva. Lombasa will face the winner between Ba and Suva, which is currently underway. The match between Suva and Ba, as mentioned, is currently underway. Back to Ravin Escar and he comes in with a cross and the header by Ilisoni Longivo. Facing away City Veni Rakai, City Veni Rakai for the Lombasa side. He comes in with a cross, a good one and an own goal. An own goal by, by an own goal and following through is Asnil Raju. And Tony Tuibuna with a chance. And Tony Tuibuna in the fourth. Tony. Ilisoni, the flag stay down in Ilisoni. Longoy Vau has Dongotuki in the way. And Aquila makes it five goals to five goals to nil. England will have to wait to book a spot in the Euro 2020 after Czech Republic deservedly ended their 43 game unbeaten run and qualifiers stretching back 10 years. <laughs> It 
was mostly fine weather that prevailed over the country today. There were isolated afternoon showers that were experienced over some parts. We take a look at the west, cloudy and humid conditions that were experienced earlier in the day, but fine weather prevailed in the afternoon. And eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, it was humid as well with periods of rain and thunderstorms. All the way up north, Lambasa and Nambawalu were in the 30s, but sunny and warm conditions were experienced as a result. Now at sea, easterly winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. The tides, high tide is at 4.44 tomorrow morning, low tide will be at 10.38 a.m. You can expect sunrise to be at 5.43. Now the outlook for tomorrow, great news, you can expect fine weather to continue in most parts of the group for the Diwali cleaning. As for the further outlook, cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern part and interior of the larger islands in, is forecast. Elsewhere, there could be afternoon or evening showers and possible thunderstorms. Recapping the main stories, bus driver involved in Lakena fatal accident remanded. Fijians can travel with more kava to Australia and Yellow Ribbon Walk a success. Now, with the, for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. On to our poll question segment. This week, we're asking, do you think the quality of meat sold in shops and supermarkets should be reviewed? You can visit our FBC website to answer. Well, do send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email. fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. But you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And that was your FBC News for tonight. Until next time, good night. Hello here, Tawa. We love to see FM. Today, FM rocks. Bula Minaka, I'm Linda Fong. I started at Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm Akereta from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.